All right, everybody, welcome back to round two of Friday Night Modern here at GameSwap, brought to you by Top Deck Productions. First round, we got Luke Borgamanke on Black White 8 Rack versus Robert Hildebrand on Nayakiki Cord. So, that's some more interesting decks. Yeah. Interesting matchup. Yeah, I haven't seen Nayakiki Cord for probably a year. Um, I can't say I've ever seen Nayakiki Cord. Really? It's it, it used to be a super popular deck, like really, really good. <laughs> It, it's it really started out as a birthing pod deck. Okay, yeah, um, that makes sense. but when it lost birthing pod, I mean, it's still it's always been really good. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it it's it's sort of like an Abzan Company deck, except for your guys are bigger and better. Sure. Um, and you play a much better mid range game. Yeah. This is the deck that Jeff Hoogland was playing for a long time. Who by I I can't stand Jeff Hoogland, but he played this deck <laughs> a lot. Right. He actually he actually well part of the reason I can't stand him because he. He was he branded himself like the expert of this deck by consistently finishing really highly with it, even when it wasn't a meta call. Um, he just played the deck really well. But I also there there are notable instances of him cheating, like literal cheating, on feature matches with the deck. He would do things like target Pian Kira with uh, Kiki Jiki, which of course P Kiki Jiki yeah, says non legendary. Sure. And he would do this to people and win games because of it. <laughs> and like really like you're the expert with the deck. You must know. That, yeah. You know, you you literally you engineered this deck to become <laughs> tier one, and you play it relentlessly. How can you not know that you can't Kiki Jiki? Yeah, that, seems, that seems a little weird. It. Yeah, it's, but whatever. Great deck. Um, yeah, you got a turn one birds here. Luke is gonna match that with a turn one Thoughtseize, which we'll see what Robert has in hand. He's got another birds, an Ewit, an Eldritch Evolution. Oh wow! So and this a, is the uh, kind of hand I was actually Kiki gonna. Jiki. I was I was I assumed that Robert was on. Eldritch Evolution, you can actually win the game really soon here if you don't take either the Evolution or the Kiki. Uh, yeah, you could win on turn three, right? Because you... Um, not turn three. Yeah, next turn he can play Ewit, and then he can... Oh, I guess you need another target. He could Evolution for a Kiki, but that doesn't, have, that doesn't help him. Right. He needs something to untap. Yeah. Petrock83, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. So interestingly, Luke may have a way to to prevent the combo. If, is he playing Ensnaring Bridge? Do we know? Um, I think it's more of a sideboard option. Yeah. Um, but I'm not certain. It's kind of a weird sideboard card because your opponent is likely going to bring in artifact and artifact removal. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So Luke, of course, took the Eternal Witness there. Otherwise. Any other card he take would have been able to go back to Robert's hand through the Eternal Witness, and this also makes Robert's turn three a little bit awkward, as he could just use one mana to play a Birds. He could cast Eldritch Evolution, but he could find a three drop at best, which could give him another Eternal Witness. Yeah. Could get him something random, maybe like a Tireless Tracker, which probably would be really good here. Yeah, just have a draw card engine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder if that's what he ends up doing. I, I don't know. We know, of course, don't know if he's actually playing Tireless Tracker, but that's one of you know. Something it seems like a good one-up like target. Yeah. yeah. What or these, what the Eldritch Evolution decks do a lot is play a bunch of voices in Finks, right? Which are That's super true. good. I mean, those eight rack, really good, eight yeah. rack cannot beat those cards. Um, smallpox is horrible against that card. <laughs> you know, Finks. And, I mean, Finks and voice are just insane. The Liliana can never beat those cards because you, right. You make them sack and then they just kill the Liliana with yeah. the the token. Um, like. Vo voice and Kiki are so good against the rack, and I my guess is that Robert has something like five to six copies of those two creatures. Right. So it looks like Robert is going to use the evolution here. All so right, that's let's see what up he does. to up to three. So he could also find a scavenging ooze, but I bet he gets a Finx. Yeah, he doesn't really know too much about the matchup yet, right? All he's seen is yeah, all he's seen is forest so thoughts. You're right. Yeah, given that he thoughtsies. doesn't know that, I am curious to see what he gets. Yeah, maybe he happens to know that his opponent is on the rack. It's possible. Is there any? So what three mana combo piece could he get? I, I don't. He's not playing um, Deceiver. So Arc. in the, in this deck, and this is kind of key to this this style of deck, Court of Calling is a one card combo um, with Eternal Witness. Right. If you just have enough mana, you go Cord for Eternal Witness, get the Cord back. Cord for Resto, Blink Ooh. the. Ooh, gets a wow! So he's gonna get the bird back. Yeah, that's that's a pretty nice line. That's a good play. Yeah, that's that's the kind of play that Eight Rack can't deal with. <laughs> yeah, just two um, two for the price. Yeah. One. But yeah, like I said, um, yeah, what you do with, uh, I, I wonder if he's 
playing more rallyers than he is Voice or Finks. That's kind of a sweet, sweet tech. Yeah, I definitely saw a Voice. Uh, obviously, he was going through his deck there, but yeah. That, yeah, might getting be, that might be the option in the main board over like Kitchen Finks. Sure. Because it does pretty much the same thing. But So he actually opted to get back the land, which will let him cast the second bird out of his hand. So that seems just as good, I guess. Yeah, right. This um, is actually probably better because this, this, get, this gets him to four mana as opposed to three. Right. Because he doesn't... So if he wanted to, he could even cast Kiki Jiki next turn yeah, off which of Fetch Land and just like target Renegade Rally. Or right. He does actually <laughs> have... Well, th the last card in his hand so is Kiki and I think Basic Mountain. So, he could cast Kiki next turn. He wouldn't be able to trigger Revolt, maybe, but yeah, he could just copy. Yeah, if, if, if he can't. Well, what's interesting is that you do trigger Revolt. I'm not sure how it's relevant yet, but you'll trigger the Revolt automatically when the card gets sacked. So I don't know if there's some way you can abuse that. Like if you had a Restoration Angel, oh, yeah. you could Kiki make the Rallyer get sacked, trigger yeah. Revolt, and then like Resto the Rallyer. Right. This is of course assuming that Kiki remains in his hand till next turn, which is very unlikely against yeah. the rack. But yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, though we might see this Inquisition like or something blank. Yeah, that's possible. Um, anyway, I was gonna say earlier, um, cord is is a is they call it a one card combo in this deck because you you cord for E-Witness, get the cord back, cord for Angel, target the E-Wit, get the cord back, cord for Kiki. Right. It just costs like eight, I think it's like eighteen mana or something. Oh yeah, okay. You can go, <laughs> but I mean you know over the course of, like it's cord is legitimately a one card combo that you can. You know, even over the course of like two or three turns, you can very easily make that much. And that's that's 18 cord mana, which you can be right. convoking for. Sure. So Luke's going to go <coughs> with the Raven's Crime here. Seems good. That'll make him discard Mountain, and then another Raven's Crime. Okay, discard the Kiki. Kiki. All right, so right now Robert's on the beatdown for three plan. Which yeah, not terrible. could work. You never know. One problem is that future Rallyers are pretty bad here because... Yeah, it won't have revolt. Have revolt. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he goes like fetch it, land. It could be that rally is more like a one of, it's and possible, you just use yeah. it as you use it to evolution once. Another birds. <laughs> yeah, birds. Great. Birds isn't great. I feel like you just want to hold that birds in hand. Do you think he doesn't get it yet? Well, I mean, if you're just gonna discard it, why? Well, in case in case you know, I have no idea if he if he's gonna drop something or not, right? Well, sure, but I mean. Like, you're going to get Raven's Crime to get at some point, so you might as well just deploy your bird so you have extra mana if you get smallpox or something. Yeah, I guess. But if if you're going to get, you're going to force Luke to discard a land to do that to Raven's Crime. So I, I don't know. I just don't see what you get out of playing the bird here. Someone commented on you talking about Jeff cheating on stream. What do they say? Surely Reddit would have blown up about it if, if that had happened. It was uh, a while. It was a long time ago. Though, yeah, right? that definitely happened. And it, Redder he, probably did blow up about he, it. Yeah. He, wait. He's he's saying I'm I'm lying because surely if that was true, Reddit would have. I like how Reddit is the, is your truth gauge. I this de this definitely happened. <clears throat> so small box here is actually worse for Luke than it is for. Yeah, I don't understand the small box. He's gonna sack a bird, sack a forest, and who cares? Lose one. He's not gonna have to discard a card because he doesn't have any. Luke has to discard. He'll discard a Raven's Crime. I mean, a Raven's Crime's dead, sure, but yeah, it doesn't matter. But but Luke did get down a a rack here, and you know, interestingly, I'm guessing Robert also has Quasali Pride Mage main, which will let him uh, remove the rack if he can find that. Or a Eldritch Evolution. He doesn't have enough mana to cord for it right now. He's going to get in there with the Rallyer. Puts Luke to 7. The Wreck put Robert to 9 this turn. Yeah, here we got a Scoot. Yeah, that's <laughs> that seems really good. Yeah, that, that's probably going to put Luke, this game if away. If Luke doesn't have like an instant Fatal Push. Sure. Uh, yeah, the Scoot's... I mean, how, many, how much life can you gain with that right now? You can eat both the Raven's Crimes... You can um, eat creatures out of your own graveyard. Yeah, you can eat one, two. What? <laughs> I think Luke wanted to retrace Raven's Crime there, but then realized that his opponent has no cards in hand. Right. <laughs> so he just. <laughs> okay. There you go, Luke. So Robin's going to eat a bird, gain one, grow Scoos, and actually, he can just kill. Yeah, Luke's just dead. Yeah. Well, no, he has Muta Vault now, so he can block. Okay. So th that buys him one turn, but. It's going to be close. I mean, Robert is going to seven, but Robert is going to slightly win this race. Yeah, Luke has to draw. Well, 
Oh, well, I, I guess if he has, if he finds a fatal push. Yeah, he can remove scoops. Yeah, if, but you, if you use the Muta Vault to block the the rallier, draw a fatal push. I guess you could win. Oh, is that a is that a hunt master? Some sort of transform card. I think that's a hunt master. I can't see what else it would be. Yeah, I doubt he's playing Dusquatch recruiter. Hunt, hunt master is incredibly good here if he had another mana. Hunt master is another card that the rack really isn't very good against. Yeah, there's a lot of cards in this deck that uh that are just really good. Are against really the good rack. against the rack. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the rack does not want to see green white. The Scoos is going to eat a creature, <laughs> gain a life, get a counter, eat another creature, gain another life, get another counter. <laughs> yeah, so Scoos is a 5-5. Five five. Could be a 6-6, six because six, I think there's, yeah, there's still Ewit in the yard, which looks like that's what he's going to do. Yep. Get to a, a safe life total. And now Luke has to chump the Scoos with the Muta Vault. I guess he could go to 1 and trade with Rallier. I don't really know if that's better. Yeah, I think I, I think I Muta Vault has I to guess I guess no. I guess it's actually correct there to trade, right? Because then if you draw a fatal push you can Right. Yeah. I yeah, don't I, yeah. I mean this way you're just delaying the the inevitable. Yeah. The other way you gave yourself outs. Yeah. It looks like you drew a land anyway. Okay. So that'll do it for game one, yeah. A little bit a little bit too aggressive from Robert's end and the birds that are really helping him. You know, get get a few extra mana when you needed well, it. Yeah, Sco Scoos was a huge top deck yeah. too. Um, of course, I mean, so was the Huntmaster. But Luke actually, that smallpox, that smallpox actually gave Luke some semblance of hope because right. there's no way he could have beat the Huntmaster. He yeah, did have a chance not. to beat the Scoos. Yeah. Well, so what do we think? The oh yeah, go ahead. Right, yeah, moving to board. So if Luke has ensnaring bridges, I guess he brings those in. But Robert's deck is so toolboxy that he's gonna probably have an answer to whatever Luke is trying to do. I'm guessing we see like damnation or flaying tendrils from Luke. Um, maybe a graph digger's cage if he has those. Hey, a graph digger's cage seems pretty good against the uh, against this this Kiki deck right. It stops Cord and Eldritch Evolution. Sure. I wonder if Ryan or if Luke has something like um, like uh, like a Hallowed Moonlight. Oh, he's playing in white. That's true. Yeah. In your, in your in, yeah in your black white deck. Um, Obviously, he doesn't have Containment Priest, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, fortunately not. Um, Luke probably has... I mean, does Lingering Souls seem good here? Not really against Scavenging Ooze. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, true, true. Um, and even though, right, Scavenging Ooze is probably one of if Robert has plenty of ways to find it. Yeah, so. God, this matchup just seems hard. Yeah. Like, your, your, opponent, your opponent's got such good creatures to fight against what you're doing. If he's got... Uh, Lily, the last hope that actually is probably pretty good. Yeah, that that does seem really good. Um, gives you a good win con that your opponent can interact with right. and kills or neuters a lot of your guys. Yeah. Yeah, that does seem good. Though the thing about playing Lily on the last hope in this deck is you Doesn't usually do anything else. yeah well, yeah you want to have creatures yeah. to use the minus ability right and you're not you know maybe Luke has like a silent visitor but I don't even. Yeah. I don't think you bring that in here. No. You bring an Asylum Visitor against decks that won't put up blockers for it, because it's a 3-1. Yeah. And, of course, Robert has... I mean, there's no deck that has more good blockers than this. <laughs> sure. I wonder if Robert has uh, Ley Lines of Sanctity. Um, that could be. Yeah. I feel like I feel like this deck isn't the kind of deck that wants Ley Line, because you, your burn matchup is already good. Sure, yeah, with all Keep the just get, yeah, yeah. You, you're playing green white, you got some good creatures you can cord for. Sure. But you could play it. Hand disruption's also not really good against Kiki Cord because of cards like Eternal Witness. You have sort of like a, a fluid membrane between your hand and your graveyard. Yeah. So I'm not sure I'm not sure you'd have the ley line, but it seems okay. Yeah, I guess what's gonna be important here, if Luke can steal like a a turn one mana creature and Robert has like a mana light hand, right, that could that could help him get Established well enough that with slowing Robert down, he might be able to to get there before Robert develops a board like he did last game. Yeah, I also think that Luke, you know, Luke would have been much more in contention for that last game if he just had multiple, if he had multiple threats, right? He just had one copy of the rack. Yeah. If he had the rack and Shrieking Affliction, I mean, his opponent was down to seven life yeah. and had no cards. Yeah, he drew three Raven's Crimes, which... <laughs> right, that's... Uh, you, yeah, that was not very good. I don't even... It doesn't... It doesn't seem like the deck even wants to play three or four of those. Like it seems like a card you want just two or two, yeah. Because they're so they're so worthless yeah, in they're redundant they're copies. Um, 
Really? So Luke opted to be on the draw? <sighs> yeah, I... That seems... I know you're supposed to do that with the rack or whatever, but that... I, I know we've talked about this. And Wait, I thought you were supposed to do that against the rack. Yeah, but... So that's 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 the thing, right? You... But you want to <laughs> give... If you're the rack, you want your opponent to have few, as few cards as possible. I still, I still contest that. I still don't think that's worth it. Well, definitely um, not against the the mana creature deck, right? Like you want to be able to well, exact, that. Exactly, it has all the same drawbacks of being on the draw. Your hand disruption becomes worse. Oh my god, look at this turn two Finx. Like that's yeah, like that alone might just <laughs> might just win the game for so Robert. I I'm I'm not sold on the being on the automatic be on the uh, yeah. be on the draw thing. I mean, I could see it in some situations, but definitely against a, a deck with uh, mana creatures on turn one, you want to be able to strip those from his hand if you can. Yeah, exactly. And and I know we've said this before. Uh, or I've said it before, but when you think about it, by the time that your opponent takes their first turn, it's all a wash. It's a moot point. Um, by the time, uh, by being on the draw, by the time that Robert took his first turn, Luke has eight cards, which is the same way that it would have been right. the other way around. It just oh. it just doesn't make any sense to me. And now Luke drew a uh, Tyler's tracker here. So that's also really good in this matchup, assuming he's able to keep two lands in play and he's got the fetch to back it up right away yeah so this already getting way out of hand for for luke he's got to deal with two hard to deal with threats this is where a flaying tendrils would be amazing right it yeah would, it would yeah just, assume, it, would probably assume win, it would probably win the game yeah i assume that's a card luke has um yeah definitely possible yeah you've got to get rid of this tyler's tracker you just i mean you just lose to that right right yeah yeah, right. Robert should be at 22. I wonder if he missed his life gain trigger. Is that possible to do with things? I don't know. Um, I mean, you can definitely miss it. Because uh, players are in charge of keeping track of their own life total. So, if oh, he's shocked on Toronto. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Yeah, he's at 20. I forgot about that. Sorry. Of course, he to, got that expedition stomping ground. I don't love that stomping ground. It's all right. So there's Lily of the Veil, but that is not great. That's not good against this board. It's going to tick it up. Yeah, like we said earlier, sure. um, Lily of the Veil is really bad against cards like Voice and Finks. All right, so we see Robert discard a Selfless Spirit there. But the problem now is that Tyler's Tracker is just going to get get big. It's going to get Robert extra cards. Yeah, even Liliana just like... dies immediately. Yeah, if even you just get like... like Two clues here. I feel like the game's right. over. If you yeah, activate yeah, two mean, clues, you just you just win. Yeah, Robert or I mean Luke really needs. He needed flame tendrils that turn, but beyond that, he needs he needs a sweeper like as soon as possible. Yeah, I I think these decks play damnation, but I'm not sure. Yeah, even damnation here can still well, leave some of Robert's threats the alive. Finks, it leaves yeah. the things behind it still. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. And then, I mean, like, imagine if maybe maybe Luke didn't, I mean, Luke obviously didn't know this, but if Luke had, you know, was on the play and took that bird's turn one, like, he has so much more time to develop his board. Like, Lily becomes way better. Right, I mean, that's that's why like, I don't understand the whole, yeah. the, the choice to be on, it's, it's, I think it's sometimes right, and sometimes theoretically it makes sense, but what you really need is to, one, make an informed, match-dependent decision, and two, just in general, you need a data-driven way to say that, hey, it's better in general to take yeah. the draw, which I, I don't think it is. I mean, it, hand disruption, the deck is built on hand disruption, and hand disruption is just definitionally worse on the draw than on the play. Really strange attack here from Robert. He... Not going to take out the Lily? Yeah, he decided to send Finks at Lily, but the tracker at him? Oh, he's got a four drop. Okay. Oh, okay. It's Hunt Master. I guess it's regardless, and it doesn't matter which way attacks. <laughs> yeah. So Robert can't, or Luke cannot beat Hunt Master unless he has a Flying Tendrils. Yeah, um, oof, how good! I mean, it's sort of, it's sort <laughs> of like, I mean, you just, you just, you just lose the game here if you don't yeah. have Tendrils. Um, or Damnation helps, right? But sure, Damnation. Yeah, Damnation or Tendrils. If you don't have one of those right now, you just, you just lose. Yeah. And does he have it? Does not look like it. Holy, holy duck! Lily down to cat to be the player to get small poxes online. That's an, I, yeah, I'm not sure. So Lily was certainly dead to a down tick. Um, he got he gets rid of birds right, but 
Robert also only had one card in hand, so it might have been tempting just for just to get rid of that card. And you know, small box is not even good to begin with against Kiki, so I don't really know like how much you wanna or not Kiki, uh, Finks. So I don't really know like how much you you wanted to get rid of something there. Sure. I mean, if do you think he would? I I don't think he would have sacked the bird anyway, right? I mean, he would have sacked the Finks. Right. Yeah. And he'd probably just do that still now. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure Luke was able to grab. My guess would be. My guess would be in this rack deck, you don't take out Liliana too often, but that this is a matchup to take out Liliana. Yeah. Um. Well, it. Here's what. Here's the thing. I would say in this matchup, it would be so much better on the play. Yes. Yeah. yeah in this matchup, Liliana would still be fine on the play, right. but he put himself on the draw. Yeah. Um. You know, Liliana on the play here. You know, you you played on turn three. You take out their mana dork and whatever they played on turn two. Yeah. And then you have an opportunity to tick up Lily again before they can swing. Whereas it's totally reversed if you chose to be on the draw. That's just. It's if you're gonna choose to be on the draw, please take out the lily in the matchup where the lily's terrible on the draw. So Luke here, yeah, basically has to dismember Hot Master. Yeah. And the I rest mean, of his hand, I think, was like smallpox, wrench mine, or smallpox, smallpox, something like that. Well, gosh, it almost seems like you should or or could consider dismembering the tireless tracker. Well, yeah, I guess. Though I guess I guess it's in Robert's best interest to just be able to pass turn. Yeah, yeah. draw a card, oh, he, keep the card in hand, pass turn, flip hunt master. Yeah. So we're going to uptick Lily to discard smallpox. I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Well, that doesn't change. That's that seems incorrect, right? There's no there's no way that that forcing yourself to discard a card when Lily's dead, no matter what, matters. Yeah. If you cast the smallpox, you lose one life. I'm not sure how relevant that. And you also have to discard your other card in hand. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> which? What's his other card in hand? Uh, it might be a wrench mine. It might be another smallpox. I'm not sure. Yeah. So we're we're seeing in chat that uh, Luke needs this bridge. <laughs> uh, the fact is that bridge doesn't actually win you the game here when your opponent you know has cards like Huntmaster. Huntmaster can win through yeah. bridge. I'm I'm also um, certain Robert's playing a Kosali Pride Mage. Yeah, almost. I'm probably Reclamation Sage. Yeah. He's probably not playing Hierarch, though. Hierarch's one of the nice ways to hedge Bridge here, but I, d I don't yeah. think Robert has Hierarch. Yeah, not sure. So Luke snap block Tireless Tracker here. I don't really know. I mean, why. It, is, it is a 3 2, right? Sure, it but doesn't, doesn't he have has a two clues in play. Yeah, there you yeah go. and he can That's sack a clue. That's a much better block. <laughs> I. You want to block a wolf too, right? Well, this makes a damnation a lot better, right? If you take I, out the I, front I, half of things. I guess, yeah. So is Luke not actually on white today? No, we saw a guy that's trying to turn one. Oh, that's right. One. You're right. You're right. Is that a white card in his hand that he can't cast? No, I think it's just another small pox or something. <coughs> All right, well. Draw is another land. Is that no, another that's mutable? I didn't know that's lingering souls. Oh yeah, okay, he actually can't Which cast. Which now that. he uh, he cannot cast. I I guess that's an, that is actually a reason to keep smallpox because then you can discard your lingering souls and cast it out of your <laughs> graveyard. Yeah, I guess. I think he I, I, guess. I think he does have another smallpox, but maybe he just passed the turn here. Man, Robert's all the way up to three clu clues. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, even if Luke wipes the board here, board he's got all these. These clues that Robert can draw cards from. <laughs> now maybe maybe if Luke plays a uh, a Stony Silence to fight these uh, to fight these clues. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Stony Silence to lock out the clues. Oh man, that's that's going deep. Okay, so I guess we play the small box here. Yeah. And discard the souls. And if you're Robert, you sack your birds. Sure. Yeah, you already had four mana. and You got red, so. Let's see if Robert uh, remembers to float mana to crack a clue. Um, yeah, it looks like he's just going to crack them both in response here. Yeah, it seems like the, the best thing to do. Yep, so sack the birds in the forest, but not before tapping each for mana. Right. 
And also not before you don't want to sack your clue beforehand because then you got to discard your card to small packs. So he waits till small packs resolves. Oh sure, I, yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, good good play by Robert. So yeah, he's got the mana floating. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and crack. Yeah, his clue. Got the mana floating. Let small packs resolve. Now crack the clue. Good good call. I I forgot about that. Robert playing it very expertly. Yeah. Yeah, what Lude needed to do there was like, uh, go to combat. <laughs> yeah, he did. Jump, jump, start the phase <laughs> so his opponent doesn't doesn't crack the clue. Of course, he always has. Hey, he always has a chance to draw another card from a clue, and this also basically makes that shrieking affliction invite like totally useless. Yeah. Sure, Robert takes one or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And now. So I think you can just swing for lethal if you play the mountain, yeah. get a clue, sack both clues. Yeah, that, that's going to do it. That makes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep. So you, if you sack two clues exactly, you just swing for Oh, well, he has a mutavolt. Oh, he can't activate mutavolt. So yep. yeah, that's that's lethal. Mutavolt is 7 plus 2 plus 2. Here. Yep, Luke's going to scoop it up. Sees the writing on the wall. This matchup seems really hard. Yeah, that seems like... I. It, it's weird. Like I usually don't think that many matchups are bad for the rack, but that seems so, like a terrible. Matchup. So I have a great rack matchup playing three voice and two Huntmaster main board, um, and I assume that Robert feels the same way. With between yeah. Rallyer, Kitchen Finks, Mana Dorks are actually pretty important yeah, against the rack. Definitely, he has Quasali Pride um, Major too. Pri yeah, I've got three Pride. Like it's just yeah, Green White seems like just yeah, a Green bad Green White is is really really good against the rack, um, but especially this deck that has. Eldritch Evolution and Cord. Right. So. And Luke definitely didn't see any sideboard cards there, so I don't know. No, like well, maybe that would have helped. He couldn't. Him. Yeah, he didn't even have white mana to. You know, yeah. I think one of the ways you you could possibly win this matchup is by resolving a few lingering souls. Yeah. Um, and then keeping your opponent low on resources. Sure. But he couldn't even yeah, he <laughs> cast the one souls he, he had. Have, he didn't have any white mana. All right. Well, that is going to do it for round two here. Um, we're going to take a short break, and we will be back in about 20 minutes for round three. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching.